Prior to his suicidal charge, George Armstrong Custer was known for leading the expedition that discovered gold in the Black Hills, setting off a desperately needed gold rush and throwing multiple treaties out the window. At the time, the United States was in a depression. The California gold rush of the 1840s was long over. The Panic of 1873 had seen farm prices plunge, jobs disappear, and crime skyrocket. The discovery of gold was a simple remedy to the nation's ills, and even if the Black Hills didn't hold the coveted ore, the land itself would provide some economic boons. You see, the railroads of the time were itching for more land to lay down track and new routes to run. An expedition to facilitate this goal wasn't unheard of. The military expedition into Kansas had been done with an eye towards construction for the Union Pacific Railroad. This wasn't the only source of pressure. Private expeditions into the hills were forming in Yankton, Dakota Territory, what is now South Dakota. This occurred despite the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1868, which left the Black Hills to the Lakota, who fiercely defended it against all intruders. Prior incidents included the supposed expedition that left behind the Thoen Stone in 1834, and a British man who led a failed expedition that ended comically. The first ended in a massacre, and the second was stripped of all provisions, including the clothes on their backs, before fleeing the Black Hills. Custer's expedition consisted of cavalry, artillery, and infantry, two prospectors, several reporters and professors, and an African-American cook named Sarah Campbell, who would be the first woman to enter the Black Hills. Calamity Jane would sneak in later disguised as a man on a subsequent gold expedition. Despite a lack of skirmishes with Native Americans, the expedition was not without its trials. One man accidentally shot himself in the leg, and another died in a duel. A few others would die of dysentery, probably facilitated by drinking gypsum-laden water. Gypsum water has similar effects to milk of magnesia, which loosens your stolen bowels. A more serious incident would occur when the Native American guides from the Rees tribe wanted to kill a band of Lakota that the expedition came across and parlayed with. You see, prior to leaving Fort Abraham Lincoln, Custer had sent out messages that the expedition was not hostile and that he desired no bloodshed during its journey. The Black Hills themselves were considered a paradise to the soldiers. Rising out of the surrounding plains, the hills were cooler with plenty of water. Custer waxed poetic over the area in his journal. Keep in mind that the expedition was during July and August. The temperatures must have been a far cry cooler back then than they are today. Now, the discovery of gold was supposedly made in a place called Custer's Park by William McKay. He had taken a shovel and a pan down to a stream and claimed to have found two cents worth of gold. Some dispute this and claim Horatio Nelson found gold first or that gold wasn't found at all during the trip. But as gold would be found by several others in the Black Hills, the newspapers probably felt justified in going hog wild that summer. The New York Tribune reported the few glittering grains with a slight residue of earth were carefully wrapped up in a piece of paper and put in the miner's pocketbook. It was simply an earnest of what was to come. And what a to come it was. By the time the expedition returned to Fort Abraham Lincoln at the end of August 1874, expeditions for gold were already forming across the country. Until November 1875, federal troops tried to prevent these expeditions from entering the territory. Many were arrested and dragged out. This couldn't stem the rush. A second expedition in 1875 was sent through as the government was uncertain if there was truly gold enough to risk war with the Lakota. Gold fever had taken complete hold of the nation. Conflict came to a head in 1876 with the Great Sioux War, also known as the Black Hills War. This would include the Battle of the Little Bighorn, where Custer foolhardily died alongside his brother and brother-in-law. Following the later defeat of the Lakota, Cheyenne, and Arapaho that same year, the United States took control of the Black Hills. Despite their forced relocations, the Lakota never accepted the validity of the U.S. appropriation. They have continued to try to reclaim the property and filed a suit against the federal government. This lawsuit resulted in the U.S. attempting to give the Lakota $106 million for the area. The Lakota refused. 
The money remains in an interest-bearing account, which, as of 2015, amounts to over $1.2 billion. As for the gold Russian settlers, the gold eventually dried up, like with all Russia's. Railroads carved through to new settlements, some of which are still inhabited and now full of tourists, come to gawk mostly at Mount Rushmore. Others are ghost towns rotting into the hillsides and sprouting ponderosa pine. Thank you for watching, remember to leave a like and keep discussion civil, and I'll see you next time in history.